This montage was put together by uh, AJ+. Plus. I wanted to show this first minute because it really does show the type of people that our mainstream media and mainstream media in the West brings us to speak on Israel-Palestine, to speak on this ongoing genocide. The type of people that we are supposed to look to, according to our media, we are supposed to look to to tell us the truth, to tell us what's really happening, to tell us uh, what, what, what we should really be feeling about these events as bombs rain down on children and this montage this one minute montage really clears it up you're watching a segment on the brutal israeli assault on gaza as the palestinian death toll mounts the anchor mentions they have a guest or an analyst to discuss the loss of palestinian civilian life who are you expecting to see are you expecting to see a human rights lawyer a un worker maybe an actual palestinian or are you expecting this Joining us now is Israeli government spokesperson Ilan Levy. Joining me now, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus, spokesman uh, for the Israel Defense Forces. I've been speaking to the Israeli government spokesperson Mark Rega. Joining me now is Shahar Azani, former Israeli diplomat and spokesperson for the Israeli consulate. We are now joined by Ophir Falk. He is a foreign policy advisor to Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. A key feature of Western reporting on Palestinians is who is allowed to tell the story of Palestinians both the history of the occupation as well as real-time atrocities being committed by the Israeli state. Great points and great montage put together there of who exactly is allowed to tell the story of Palestinians. It is almost never, very rarely, is it Palestinians who are allowed to tell the story of Palestinians. If they wanted to even pretend to give us both sides of the story, which is, is not really a both sides in genocide. There's kind of a one side in genocide. But if they wanted to even pretend to give us both sides, you would give both sides. They do not give both sides. Now, people, this doesn't mean people can't point to, well, what about that CNN report two weeks ago where for three minutes they had on someone in Gaza who said they do not like being murdered? What about, what about that report? You can point to a report here or there. That is not the point. The point is the ongoing type of coverage. And I'm about to give you even more numbers on how exactly this works. But I will also add something that uh, AJ Plus was not adding in that segment, which is the probably the biggest thing that our mainstream media, the mainstream media of the West, which is still, let's be honest, I wish it weren't true, it's still the number one driver of information. It's the number one place that people are still getting their information, especially on foreign policy, maybe not as much when they can walk out their door and see that our infrastructure is collapsing and that their water tastes like burning. Maybe not for that, but for foreign policy and things like that, they do that if, for what's going on around the world still works where people are getting it. The number one thing they do is just not talk about, for example, the genocide in Gaza. Like if you go and look at the videos, the video clips that are put up on CNN or MSNBC, or you just leave on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, any of them, you just leave them running. 97% or something of what you hear is going to be about Donald Trump. It is going to be about Donald Trump. Occasionally, it'll be something about Biden. If it's Fox News, you're going to hear a lot about Biden. In general, it is just Trump, 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 Trump. Did we mention Trump, 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 Trump? That is what they're doing. Now, that serves multiple purposes. One is the liberal media is trying to make sure he doesn't get elected again. But more important than that, that is used as a smokescreen. It is used as a veil. It is used as a curtain. It is used as a fourth thing that covers up your eyes. It is used as a thing to cover up the reality of what's going on in Israel, Gaza, Palestine, et cetera, as well as various other areas. It's also used to cover up the fact that the proxy war in Ukraine is uh, achieving nothing but except murdering Ukrainians. Uh, so it's used in a lot of ways. But I wanted to bring you this report, and this was from before October 7th, which is important because uh, this is not just this is this is not just you know an analysis coming to you since October 7th. This is decades long, a decade long analysis of who the U.S. media talks to when they want to talk about Israel, Palestine, any aspect of it. Who do they speak to? Who gets to write about Israel and Palestine? And this is coming from uh, 972mag.com. They do great work, by the way, on Israel and Palestine. It says, I had expected to find relatively few opinion pieces by Palestinians. Shock. 
But what surprised me was how much Palestinians have been talked about in major U.S. media outlets over the decades. In the New York Times, less than 2% of the nearly 2,500 opinion pieces that discuss Palestinians since 1970 were written by Palestinians. Less than 2% were written by Palestinians. In the Washington Post, the average was less than 1%. So the New York Times, they have the total opinion pieces adding up over the decades. The total is 1.8% written by Palestinians. Washington Post, of a uh, total number of articles about Palestine or Israel, is 3,249. The percentage by Palestinians, 1%. 1%. By Palestinians, they also give some of the other uh, some of the other outlets. The New Republic, since 1970, 497 uh, pieces about Palestinians, zero by Palestinians, zero, not once. You think they would like accidentally have one article written by a Palestinian? You think like they just wouldn't be, you know, analyze, you know, wouldn't be, it wouldn't, they, they, the guy who normally checks to make sure no Palestinians ever get to say anything would be sick one day or his, you know, his kid is sick and he has to drive him to school and then whoopsie, an article gets out by a Palestinian. But no, no, didn't happen. Zero over <laughs> zero since 1970. Then you got the nation. Okay. The nation, many people, many of you know, Nation Magazine is a more left-wing, uh, semi-liberal outlet. It is definitely more like left-wing than the New York Times, especially on issues of Russia. They've done a pretty good job of debunking a lot of Russia gate. They're one of the only outlets, uh, them, Rolling Stone, and Forbes, believe it or not, are the only outlets to have covered the $21 trillion unaccounted for at the Pentagon over 15 years. $21 trillion, yes, with a T. Uh, I covered it, but that doesn't count. So the nation does some good stuff. Sometimes they do uh, some garbage. But anyway, since 1970, 323 pieces about Palestinians, only 10%, 10.5% by Pal of those by Palestinians. So... Uh, just really impressive numbers showing how these outlets and these are right the 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 papers of note, the papers of record, New York Times, Washington Post. This is even before October seventh. The only people who get to tell the story of what it is to be Palestinian, what it feels like to live there, what's happened over the years, what it feels like to live in an open air prison in Gaza. The only people who get to tell those stories are not those people, nor even, you notice this just says by Palestinians. This could be Palestinian Americans. It could be Palestinians living anywhere in the world. It doesn't, it, it, I understand if it's kind of difficult to maybe find a, a Gazan that's uh, even before October 7th that, that, you know, is able to write in English for the New York Times. Maybe that's a little difficult. Difficult. Maybe you give them a little, little margin of error there. This is even Palestinian Americans. Nobody is allowed to tell or less than 1%, allowed to tell the story of Palestinians except non-Palestinians. And I'm sure a large percentage of those are, uh, you know, Israeli spokespeople, as we just saw in that montage by AJ+. It really is all about covering up the narrative.